Hey guys, welcome to, to Unbiased Rugby. My name is Donovan. Hi, uh, Gordon. Good day to you. Uh, we're actually coming from our, uh, uh, our set. We've got actually got our flag behind us. This is like a real, uh, what, what would you call it? Kind of uh, DIY kind of thing. So we've got some <laughs> pegs holding up the flag. So it's very, very off the cuff. We just thought we'd try something a little different just to, to try test the new background. As you can see, it's a it's an amazing neutral, unbiased flag at behind us. <laughs> so, but what we're going to do now is we're just going to talk about uh, four points today uh, for for the weekend. So we'll talk about uh, the Curry Cup final, uh, the World uh, World Rugby Breakthrough Player of the Year nominations, uh, New Zealand versus Australia, and then we'll talk about the Springbok squad that's going to be touring touring uh, in November. Okay. What what was your highlights of the weekend, Gordon? Hey, the Western Province versus uh, the Sharks, and I never expected the Sharks to win. No, neither did I. I was pleasantly surprised. It was a bit of a tough game. It wasn't the ideal rugby no, game. No, it wasn't. It was a bit of an arm It result. was a scrappy uh, no. game, but uh, in the end we won, and I'm very proud of our young team. So we'll, we'll start off there. Uh, so the final score on the Curry Cup final was the Sharks 17 and uh, uh, Western Province 12. Uh, Western Province got all their points from penalties. Uh, the Sharks had uh, two tries, uh, a penalty and, and obviously the, the converted tries. The one thing I must say about this game is that there were three disallowed Sharks tries. Yes, yes. So effectively the Sharks crossed the try line five times during that game. Just, yeah. showed, just showed pure dominance. Even though their scrum was being pushed back drastically. You know, the Western Province scrum was much stronger than mm. the Sharks scrum. But I did note, Don, that uh, we seem to be playing in the Western Provinces' uh, uh, first half and quarter for quite some time. A lot, a uh, lot. And I think we dominated the game there. I think so too. I think at, uh, at broken play, uh, there was a lot more forward dominance from the Sharks. Uh, and you know, normally nine times out of ten, uh, I would always say that a, a, a powerful scrumming pack or a, or a or a team that's got an ascending scrum, they normally should win the game. Mm. But it's how you use that ball. And I just don't think uh, Western Province had the game management to be able to beat the Sharks on the day. Uh, even though Western Province, I'll, I'll be honest, were the best team over the entire Curry Cup, mm. they just at the last hurdle, the Sharks just pipped them. And, and, and they deserved that victory on the day. Yeah, and it was, a, it was actually a, a, a home game for the Western, for Western Province. It's most amazing that every time uh, Sharks and Western Province clash, uh, when they when when they play in uh, KZN, the Western Province beat the Sharks and vice versa. It's, when they it's play, it's the strangest in the thing. Cape, but yeah. I was actually going through the the last time that the 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 teams, the last five Curry Cups that these teams have been in the finals, and they've actually alternated. So first year was the Sharks, then it was mm. Western Province Sharks, Western Province, and now it's Sharks again. But yeah, overall, I, I thought it was an okay game. It was it was an arm wrestle kind of game. It wasn't that free flowing X Factor kind of game, uh, like last weekend with with the Bulls and the and Western Province. That was a, a, a lot more entertaining mm. game than than yesterday's game. But sometimes games are just arm wrestles, mm. and you just have to deal with it. Nice thing too is that we had a reasonable crowd there. I think thirty five thousand. Uh, thirty five thousand. Am I right? I think it was about that. Yeah. It, was, it was really, really nice. The the, the stadium. Uh, what I would say was about uh, eighty to ninety percent. Uh, it was. It was very, very good. Uh, you know, for a Curry Cup final, yeah. it wasn't wasn't too bad. I still thought there was probably more at the Curry Cup final than there were was at the Mata Ten final yeah. in in New Zealand. Uh, not, not that we really watched Mata 10, it was just, I just watched the highlights of that game in the morning. Uh, yeah, so now we'll, we'll move across to World, uh, World Rugby Breakthrough Player of the Year Awards. So these are for players that have been playing for less than a year, or playing uh, top level rugby for less than a year. Uh, and they're the break, breakout stars. So previous winners from last year, the year before and the year before that was uh, Rico Ioani from New Zealand. Uh, Mario Toji from England, and then Neil Milnaskada from New Zealand. So New Zealand are pretty, mm. they always generally get these awards because they always have breakout players. But uh, the three nominations for this year are Afia Duanti from South Africa, uh, Jordan Lamour from uh, Ireland, and Carl Tuiknukufe. Um, I actually must apologize. I, I was watching Two Cents Rugby the other day. Uh, and the, he was announcing the Springbok squad, and he could pronounce all the all the Afrikaans surnames like really well. And uh, so it made me think that maybe I should start learning how to pronounce the Pacific Islanders 
uh, surnames a little bit better. I think they have an equally hard time pronouncing some of the the ethnic. Uh, I know I, I, languages like because uh, they are very difficult to pronounce. Uh, even people in this country yeah, that are brought I, up in this country I have battle a difficulty. With, I battle with some of the causa names, uh, especially uh, North Sutu things like yeah. that. I, I find it. I find them a lot more difficult. But um, uh, we are, we are trying to improve. So those are the three nominations. Uh, who do you think should win of those three? So Big Carl's got the schnorr. Yeah. Uh, and then you have Fiat Yuanti, who's, who's, who's the South African winger, that amazing winger. And then Jordan Lamar is a fullback for Ireland. It's very difficult to say. I think the schnorr guy, uh, he's a powerful player. Mm. Very, very tough. What was his name? Theo. Carl. Uh, Carl, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put my money on Afia Duanti just because I, I think he's an exceptional oh. player and he's, he did really well at Super Rugby and, and at international level. Okay, so now we'll go to the first game of the weekend, which was uh, New Zealand versus Australia. Uh, New Zealand won that game 37-20. Uh, what did you think of the game, Gordon? Uh, brilliant. Brilliant. I was so proud of, of New Zealand um, because, you know, they are my favorite team in international rugby and uh, I think I played a brilliant game and uh, it was it was actually good rugby it was I, I, I must admit uh, I thought the first half was 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 it was still very very close uh, but I just I just felt near the end I, d I, I don't uh, look and don't take this the wrong way Australian uh, the people who watch this channel it's just it just felt like New Zealand didn't even try very hard to actually win that game uh, they, they won it convincingly and it just felt like they they just they were just going through the motions and they won the game yeah. uh f from from an australian point of view uh, i was looking after the game and i, I looked at the then you know with uh michael checker and uh steve hansen you know when they do the after match things mm. and it just looks like michael checker's a, a defeated defeated coach uh he really just seems very very down uh and it's it's pretty difficult to try keep your team going when you're losing so much mm. and uh I don't know what's what's going to happen. I know there's big changes on the horizons for for Australia, but uh, look, I, I I thought it was an entertaining game, and it was great that uh, uh, New Zealand did that they won, but it was just I just I don't know what's happening with Australia. Just they just seemed completely outplayed, outclassed, yeah, out everything. Definitely. Uh, the the Tour Lutu uh, yellow card, which was a complete brain fart. Uh, <laughs> You know, you can do you can do uh, you can do some pushing around and you can do some handbags, but you don't hit somebody in the face. Mm. It's just yes, you look at it and you think it's a real soft moment, but the law states that you don't hit somebody in the face, and that's you just that's it. You know, it wasn't a close no fist. It was, it was just was more a push. Maybe yeah. he he went for his chest. No, he went for the hand. face. You reckon? Yeah, it's just look, it, the guy. I think he's still fairly young. Uh, look, Cody Taylor was pushing him, uh, so he was trying to get that get that response from him uh but uh you know if you're going to push back just push back in the shoulder you know look not that it really affected the outcome uh, over those 10 minutes i think australia actually scored but uh it was still it was a real soft moment and uh, you could see after that moment the australian side just just collapsed Defeated, yeah. yeah uh standout players for me from the new zealand side Adi Sevier. I think he's really coming into his own at at, uh, at international level. He's been on the bench for so long, and it's just so nice to actually see him starting. He is an exceptional, exceptional rugby player. Uh, the other two players that stood out for me, Ben Smith, uh, which is the winger for New Zealand. Mm. Uh, I've, I've always loved Ben Smith. I thought he's an exceptional player. And then the other one was Rico Ioane. You know, the, yeah. that exceptional wing who just scores tries all the time. Yeah. It was a very tough game, and I think both sides played equally hard. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know if Australian team is older than the New Zealand they team. Oh, they are a bit. And uh, maybe they that's with the disadvantages. I just uh, for they played well, but you know I can't say New Zealand uh, were better than Aust Australia, despite the fact that they won, because both. They had, it was entertaining rugby. No, it's just, I, I, just, I just look at, I look at the international sides and I, 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 I look at the younger players coming through. So if I look at New Zealand, got Jack Goodhue's coming through, young player. 
I think he's about 22, 23, round about there. So they've got these new stars coming through. South Africa, we've got Sabun Corsi, we've got uh, Fia Duante. Yeah. These are young guys. Yeah, Corsi is brilliant. Uh, brilliant. Corsi, if you, if you can watch a, uh, how he played in that Curry Cup final, he is, is solid, big yeah. big boy, big guy. And and literally, he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Saki Naholo. Yeah. He's tough, he's strong, he's got good and feet. And he's and he's a, definitely a springbok, that uh, speed. Uh -huh. Big time, big time. So I, I just look at a lot of the sides around the world. They've all got these younger guys that are coming through. Yes, they're young and they're a bit green and they're going to do knock-ons and all of that, but they have something special. And I, I just look at the Australian side and I just don't see those kind of players coming through. And, and uh, either their players are being poached very, very young overseas or, or they're just not identifying the talent early enough. And mm. those, those, those talented guys are going into Australian rules or they're going into league. Yeah. And and the the union guys are just missing out, missing these players completely. But listen, that's that's the those are the the, the things for the weekend. But let's just chat about the Springboks team select. We are running out of time. We've only got a couple more minutes left. We're trying to keep our shows a bit a uh, bit shorter. Uh, so I'll just go through the team sheet here. So for the forwards, we've got Thomas Dutoy. Uh, these are the props: Vilko Lowe, Franz Malherber, Trevor Nyankani, Stephen Kitsoff, Vincent Koch. Hookers, we've got Skulk Brits, uh, Malcolm Marks, and Bongi Imanambi. Uh, uh, locks, we've got Lurt de Jager, great to have him back. Ivan Etzebeth, Franco Mostert, JD Schickeling, uh, Achias Neyman, then uh, the, the loose trios. We've got Peter Steff de Toy, Sia Khaleesi, Francois Lowe, Skimbuzo Noche, Dwayne Vermeulen, Warren Whiteley. Then we've got in the backs, we've got Ambrose Papir, Louis Schroeder, Ivan van Sal, and these are number nine. We've got Andre Pollard, Damien Villinza, and Elton Yankees at 10. Uh, then our centers, we've got Damien De Allende, Andre Estes, and Jesse Creel, and uh, Ruan Nell. Uh, then our wings, we've got a few Duanti, Cheslin Colby, Sabun Corsi, uh, Sergio Peterson, and then uh, then on our fullbacks, we've got Gio Aplon and Vili Leroux. What do you think of that side, Gordon? I think uh, have we overlooked uh, the beast. Now, the beast is injured at the moment. Oh. The other player that I, I felt that missed out was Akka van der Merwe, you know, the man of the oh, match from the yeah. Curry Cup. Uh, I, I, I understand, I'm not 100% sure why Skulk Brits is there because he hasn't played. Not, I'm not taking anything away from him, but I think he's more going to become a player kind of coach, player coach type player. Uh, but Akka van der Merwe had an exceptional Curry Cup. He, he had an exceptional Curry Cup final, and he, he definitely deserves to be on the side. Uh, the other thing were the Dupree twins. Yeah, so not, yeah I was just going to mention that. Yeah. Roberts and the Dan and... Dan and John Luke. Yeah. Look, I can understand John Luke. Uh, I've always felt he was, a, he was the best of the, the three brothers, but uh, I just think that Dan Dupree's had an exceptional Curry Cup this season and John Luke's just come back. And mm. I, I just had a feeling one of them should have been chosen. Uh, my, my personal would have been Dan Dupree. Uh, the other one here that... Uh, that is, is a bit concerning for me in the forwards is Francois Lowe's inclusion again. Uh, I, yes, I know the guy's got 62 caps. He's he's an he's an exceptional rugby player, but he's just he hasn't been on form, especially even for Bath. You know, he plays mm. in, in in the Premiership, and he really just hasn't had such a great. Uh, he, he does quite a few knock-ons, and he, yeah. you know, it's 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 a little bit frustrating having him there because we could have included one of the Dupree twins. You know, especially more, Dan, more skillful player. Yeah, it's just I'm not saying he's not a skillful player. It's just he's just he's just in a slump at the moment, and he needs to sort himself out at Bath and then come back. Uh, we've got three debutants with J.D. Schickeling from uh, Western Province Lock. He's had an exceptional curry cap. Ruan Nell. I've got my own my own thoughts on Ruan Nell. He's a sevens player, and mm. he's just come across to fifty exceptional player. But he's still I, I felt there were better centres out there that that could have been chosen. And then Sergio, Sergio Peterson also had an exceptional curry cup, mm. so he also deserved to be there. Gio Aplon is a, is a fullback. I think he's 36. Gosh. Yeah, so he's quite quite an old guy. I can understand why Rusty's choosing some of these old old players that have uh, that got experience and all that to try to calm down. Especially if you think Sabun Corsi and Fiodio aren't you, mm. under, they're like 22. Mm. And, and, and the other youngster, the Shark player... Um Gosh, Kerwin Bosch, I thought you would have included yeah. him. I, I think, He's uh, actually a very exciting player to watch. I blame our previous coach for, for Kerwin Bosch because I think Kerwin Bosch is an exceptional yeah. uh, rugby player. He, I think he's an exceptional fullback. Uh, I know he can f slot in at... Uh, and I, I can understand why Damien Willems is there because he can cover both... Well, he, he hasn't really played much 50, but he can cover both positions, mm. you know, 10 and 15. 
But I just think uh, Kurenbosch is he was blooded way too early last year by who was our previous coach? Yeah, I can't remember. I, but know. I, I know Kerwin Bosch first outing. I think he was just on twenty. Yeah, and, and I just think he was blooded way too early. Big boy and tough, tough youngster, he, right? Yeah, he's just but he's just been falling along the wayside, yeah. and we're going to lose a player like that eventually to one of the overseas clubs. Yeah. They're going to come and they're going to snap him up, and he's going to be yeah. gone. But listen, guys, that's the that's the team for the the, the November internationals. Overall, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I, I I still think we we might. If we lose, if we win fifty percent of our games, I'll be happy. Obviously, we, I'd prefer to win one hundred percent of our mm. games. You know, all four tests. How many things do you think we'll win over at the end of the year, Gordon? Gosh, it's it's. We're right, playing yeah. England, yeah. France, yeah. Scotland, and Wales. Well, I think uh, Scotland might be a, a problem there because they're pretty strong guys. They're so. a good side, but uh, if I look at England, are fourth in the world. Yeah. Wales are third. Yeah. Uh, France are like. They're very low down. I think mm -hmm. they're, part, they're way past Argentina. Yeah. And then Scotland, I think, is one behind us. Yeah, that's so, the fear of yeah, Scotland. I think uh, of all the, the, the teams traveling north, I think South Africa have got the hardest one because all four of us are, all four of our teams are uh, Five Nations teams. So where some of them are playing, uh, well, not saying that Italy's not a five, uh, Six Nations team, but uh, we're playing the, the stronger of yeah. the, the, the four countries. Anything else, Gordon, you need to add? No, nothing. Hey, listen, guys, thanks for, thanks for subscribing to our channel and, and listening to the, the rantings of two, two crazy people from a small town in South Africa. <laughs> and uh, uh, listen, guys, I hope you have a great week. Uh, actually, there was, some, there was something I was going to mention. Uh, you know, we've, we've actually had some quite bad news uh, lately in our area. Our neighbor who used to come watch, come watch yeah, a lot sure. of the games with us, uh, uh, Norton, uh, he actually he committed suicide last weekend, uh, last week on, on Thursday. It was actually very, very sad. Yeah, it, it very, very sad. Very sad, suffering from uh, depression and a lot of other things that were going on in his life. You know, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and, and friends. You know, it is a really, really tough yeah. time. But it just goes to show, I know there's been a lot of talk about uh, mental health and mental health issues in, in, in the world. I know yeah, in society in general. You yeah. know, I think it's Mental Health Month or, yeah. or something like that. I, I have been reading up a lot about it. And listen, guys, if you ever feel that, you, that you're not feeling that great and, and you're feeling a little bit down, try to reach out to someone because, you know, there are people there to listen. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, we're quite sad because he, all he had to do was come, come chat with us and maybe yeah. we could have helped, you know. But... Uh, like I said, our prayers and thoughts go out to his family, and uh, and and we 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 wish him success in his in his next endeavors in the afterlife. You know. Yeah. Yeah, but listen, but, no, it was it, a big big loss. It was a big know? loss. It was a big loss because he used to come watch games with us, and it, and it was it was just nice to you know just have a yeah, have, have somebody with, else. Yeah, yeah. friendly friendly person person that that was just interested in the in the beautiful game of rugby, the yeah. same as us. But listen, guys, I hope you have a great week. And uh, and has looking forward to the weekend of international rugby's. I may do a bit of a preview before that, before the games. Uh, but listen, guys, I hope you have a great week. Chat yeah. soon. Bye. Cheers.